Maybe the first question I wanted to, to ask to you, it's, it's, it's a film that deals with a lot of things, but it's really centered around people and also around family. So there's different type of family. There's the family you are born into, there's the family that you get drawn into by relationship or marriage. And then there's also this really interesting family that comes from the world of, of stage and, and theater. And both have a lot of complexity that come within the relationship and the characters in it. But I was really curious to know about the research you did uh, when you were writing the, the film and then when you were shooting, how you managed to interact both and to really deal into the world of, of the theater and the stage and the, the dancing, which is a very interesting part of the film. Um, <clears throat> so I, I started, I think the research process ha started happening around 2018, I want to say in the summer of 2018, because I did a short film, uh, which was kind of a proof of concept for, for Joyland. Um, and uh, so for that, I used to just somehow managed to find some producers of these theater shows, etc. So I would just go and it started with me watching the shows because I actually never seen the shows in, in the theater, sitting in the theater. I'd seen you went taped versions. For real. Yeah, so I went as the audiences and I started looking at what people were doing, you know, um, how they reacted, the audiences, etc. And then I somehow made found my way backstage, which is uh and like an exceedingly exciting place to just be there. You know, you have like this, um, it's just chaos all the time, but it, it's a wonderful chaos. You know, the the norms are very different. It's the, it's the, the women who are the mainstay of those shows. So in such a patriarchal society, somehow to enter a world where the woman is the one who sells the tickets because it's her sh dance that everybody's coming to watch it, no matter how voyeuristic it might be. And one can talk about that, but it was, the truth was the star of the show is the woman. You know, so uh, and, and no matter which theater you go to, there are different women at different theaters, uh, but uh, they know that they have a certain level of power, uh, you know, which was an exciting thing to witness even today in like the most liberal of movies. You don't have, you know, you still talk about how women can and cannot sell movies or can and cannot sell tickets, etc. I was like, okay, here's a world which you may think is a B grade world, but here a woman is selling a ticket, the tickets, you know, she fills the theater. And that was just fascinating to to witness that sort of subculture exist in a society uh, with all the men present watching these shows who all step out eventually and then, uh, you know, become the polar opposite <laughs> when they go back home. Um, so, you know, talking to as many of them as possible and just spending time with them was, was certainly something that really helped, I think, uh, the process of finding the humanity of these people and this world. Uh, you know, and of course the the family life, which is uh, the actual domestic family of the Ranas, was something that was far more familiar to uh, to me. Even though that that's, it's not like oh, that's um, exactly like my family, or uh, but but there of course there there are parallels there, which are <coughs> sorry, which are uh, you know can be found in any Pakistani family, you know, in a middle class family or an upper middle class family. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, you do find the humanity in both sort of family and they all have their positivity and a lot of weaknesses and that's how the characters are going to like move around um, through, the, through the film. Um, and also I would like to, to talk about the casting because I, I believe you already knew you were going to work again with Biba or Alina, uh, but you have to bring like a much larger cast and... I would say casting the role of Eder uh, with Ali it must have not been that easy. It's it's a great character uh, and and it's a wonderful performance. I could imagine that like reading it, um, on, on scripts um, must have brought a lot of questions. It's a character that had a lot of flows. It's a character that's very endearing, but also uh, cannot dance. <laughs> He's making a lot of progress. It's. Uh, it's someone that you always want to, to root for, but also push to get into himself and to work with his family and or not, you know. So um, how did that work for you uh, to come into the film and uh, why is it difficult for you to find Ali? You can, you can start if you want. Um, I auditioned. <laughs> did you dance? <laughs> I did not, <laughs> luckily, because I, I'm quite horrible at it, so I, uh, that was complete method right there. Uh, 
Well, I, I was lucky. I got a call for an audition, and I, I went in and spent some time with Saim <coughs> um, and uh, our casting director and co-producer, Sana. And uh, I think there were a lot of things that we figured were parallels between uh, what I was thinking off the bat from reading the script and what Saim uh, was also um, imagining and what he had thought. So I think that's that's one of the things that that I mean gave me the opportunity to be able to do this. Um, and also there was something about Heather. There was something something about his quiet um, compliance, but some kind of resentful build that was happening here that that uh, linked I so I feel uh, linked Simon and I in a very very um, what I felt to be a, an incredibly powerful bond, and um, there's a lot of trust there. Now, Heather is a—he's 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 a complicated fellow. It's not um, a lot of the time he's not really saying much, um, and I think that was one of the most interesting things about something like this, because. There's a lot there somewhere at the back, but you have to find it, and you have to find it in things that um, that you might you might disregard initially. But then there are things that kind of sit at the back of your mind uh, that happen to all of us, and not particularly in Pakistan, but everywhere in the world. That happen to all of us. They sit at the back of your mind, and they eat up parts of your subconscious till they they feel like little parasites, you know, squirming around your mind. And Heather had a lot of that, and I had to find where that came. Uh, from, um, and I think that that those are the things that that I think Simon and I figured out in in some way. Also, the second, the first part of the question, I've completely forgotten, so I'm just now <laughs> rambling. If, if you would, it was hard to find him. Yes, it was very very hard to find him. Uh, he was the last person that we were auditioning actually, uh, and we had auditioned close to 600 boys before that, and uh, we like there was not. It was just it just didn't work out. Um, Thankfully, um, because uh, he sent us really bad pictures, I will say. Uh, <laughs> it goes well with the character. Yeah, really bad pictures. And I was like, why? But we really were like, okay, let's call him. We don't, the list is over. Uh, but then he came and then he was, uh, like he was the only person, who was the only guy who came and who didn't have an issue uh, out of all the 600 to, you know, who didn't talk about that, oh, am I going to, like, you know, what's the sexuality of this character? Or, like, he didn't ask that kind of question that personally really annoys me uh, because I thought that there's more to this guy than just that. And then he was also not coming worried about, uh, oh, like, you know, I'm not comfortable with this and I'm not comfortable with that. He was comfortable with everything. You know, he was actually looking to find more uncomfortable things than they were on paper, which was an interesting process, you know. Uh, and, and, like, a guy who was not, who didn't, who was not operating from, from a fear, you know, he was operating with an excitement and it, uh, to figure out something that, frankly, wasn't very clear on paper. Uh, you know, it was not a character that you, like, for example, I would say all the other characters um, were much clearer and much more endearing and much more likable on paper. Everybody liked all the women in the film when they read them, you know. But he was not. He was quite unlikable when you would read him because it was un... It was unclear why he's doing what he's doing, but somehow when you watch the film, to me it feels very believable, and I'm like, I completely understand why you're doing what you're doing, um, and I sometimes get frustrated by you, but I'm, you still have my empathy throughout, which is completely to his credit, uh, you know. Uh, and so, and it's 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 about sort of he's been born and brought up in Pakistan, but to find a guy who's still going to approach a character like this with no judgment to begin with was uh, was you know a revelation, frankly. Um, I wanted to also ask a question to you, Rustic, because you're, I guess, from the script, the women are definitely stronger, or more likable, they do carry the family, and you can identify and admire them, especially your character, a lot more. However, there's also a lot of secrets and a lot of mystery and a lot on the interaction, so how did you work around this, how did you create the character and... Was there a lot of interaction in trying to change the trajectory of 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 a fate? Actually, yes. <laughs> um, well, you know, I think um, it wasn't difficult for me. Um, 
in one way because the script was so stunning and the, the way that this woman had been written and the way that I discovered her on these pages was just so compelling and she was so, she was jumping off the pages. Um, and the script was demanding, which was, this is the first time that I've, um, I, you know, doing something that was written by um, somebody from where I belong, like my country. Um, and it was an original script and I read it and it was so demanding um, because the character is so complex and that was an exciting place to be in. Um, but it was difficult as well because, you know, uh, like you said, she's a very likable character. Um, and when you meet her in the film, she's kind of somehow, you know, miraculously, um, in living within a conservative family, she's managed to figure out a way to do what she wants and to derive like meaning from her life. And you don't really hear those kinds of stories of married women, especially women in arranged marriages back from where back back home. So it's really it was really exciting. The beginning is really exciting, but then slowly and gradually, you know, she's kind of boxed in. And um, I also know those stories of like women back home who are married and who are asked to prioritize all the other things in life uh, before what they what their heart desires. Um, and it's a difficult story to tell because there's so much grief in that story. There's so much pain. Um, and this character, Mumtaz, like carries so much of that. So it was a very weighty character and I, 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 was, I was scared to like turn it into something very, um, like I knew she had tragic elements to her, but I didn't want it to be just that, so I was scared. And so Simon and I would have, um, especially about the end, we had conversations where I think halfway through shooting the film, I was like, hey, is there a way to change the ending? <laughs> like, because we just, we, I, I, I didn't want to kill her off, certainly. So I remember I walked into well, Simon's yeah, room. Know, yeah, and she, he didn't either. So I, we walked into Simon's, we were sitting in Simon's room, like halfway through the shoot going like, she could run away. She can, that's fine. We could just change the whole shooting schedule. It's fine. It's cool. <laughs> and so we like actually considered it. And then we realized that, you know, she does run away to the train station, but she has to come back because freedom is not that easy. I mean, it's, it's a lovely thing to, to have and to want, but it's not easy. Um, and it literally takes everything. So that's why she returns. And, um, that was the fate that you know she had to, she had to suffer. Uh, but we, but we did go over it and then we realized that, you know, Changing her story would actually have been in a way like untrue because that's not how, it's not that easy. You can't get on a train and just run when you're pregnant and you don't know where you're going to go. You don't know if your family's going to accept you. You don't have any money. Like it's not easy. So it felt untrue in that moment. And so we were like, no, it has to be that. But it was painful. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you could have had Joyland too. <laughs> which, uh, but uh, maybe be, it was all a dream and then you'll come back in the, ne in the next one. <laughs> Um, I was also curious to hear about, you know, I mean, obviously from the writing and from the producing and shooting, and it's something you could also participate in. It's how do you deal with not the idea of censorship, but the idea maybe of more of acceptance and how far you can go in what you want to discuss? I, I, it's probably um, more complicated in certain countries, maybe like Pakistan, but not necessarily. I think each country we'd have to, to think about um, what will the audience accept, what is, ex how far can I go in describing not just the sexuality, the desire, but like the complexity of everyone. And was there any um, internal process where you're like, I'm, I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna go further, or in writing or in directing, and also from, from producing, like how open were you uh, in, in going all the way with what has been brought to the screen? I think in terms of producing, I would just say that we talked about alternative shots and like different ways to shoot the film so we could have a different cut for Pakistan if we needed to replace certain scenes. Um, but I feel like it, it's so tastefully done and we watch things that are so much more um, explicit, I would say, than this. So... In, uh, Pakistan was really the only country that we were like thinking about in terms of like how can we tailor this so we can still have the release that we want to interact with the audience. But for the rest of the countries, I don't think we were we were so concerned. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes it's not just the explicity; it's the ideas that are in the film and what is discussed that are could be more controversial than what you actually see. Yeah, that I mean, 
I think Sam has said in the past and probably says it better where it's like cinema sometimes should make you feel uncomfortable and if these ideas are making people feel uncomfortable then that is a reaction that we are not afraid of. I had seen Darling also and Mumtaz's character isn't even a part of that and it's such a important character in this movie. Um, so I wanted to ask about the writing and how that character emerged into this film. Uh, so Jolin was written before Darling, so I purposefully didn't want Darling to have any characters. Like I, I don't, I don't particularly think even the Alina's in both the movies. But I think her character is actually very different, you know. And uh, she's played by the same actress, but in that film, Alina is kind of playing a, a, a version of herself. You know, she's even called Alina in the film, Alina Darling, and and uh, like a more doughy-eyed, more docile, you know, more hopeful kind of, uh, slightly more naive. Uh, girl, and, and I think in this one, the, like Biba is certainly not any of those things. You know, I don't even think she's particularly. Uh, she's certainly not sweet, but she's certainly not like an easygoing girl. Uh, you know, um, like it's and Ali's character also was certainly not in in. So we had Joyland had a completely different story in my for me particularly. It was set in the same world and had certain similar thematic sort of you know overlap for sure. Um, but for me, the, 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 this particular movie was always about these three people. Uh, and, and actually, Mumtaz was the first person, the, like the, the first character to come and the, the one to actually stay. A lot changed over many, many drafts, but somehow this girl was always similar. Like she was always the heart of the film and she actually became more. Like eventually, I think the film that we ended up making for all of us, I think, even all the other cast members, they knew, like, you know, no matter what the plot of the film is, we know this film is actually about her. Uh, you know, if it is about any one character, it's probably about her. Uh, you know, it's about the, the, the one who doesn't get the coming of age, even though she might be the most worthy of it. Yeah. We, we were given the, the sign that we need to wrap up. So I'm very sorry we didn't have more time to talk. You'll have to come back. We'll come back. <laughs> And also you have another screening tomorrow at MoMA. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.